John 10.10. 10. The Bible says John 10.10. 10. You got your Bibles? Turn with me there, please. It says the thief cometh but to steal. And what he cannot steal, he will kill. And what he cannot kill, he will destroy. That means that you can be Mr. Good Guy or, Ms. or, or such a wonderful, loving, caring person. You could be the best a uh, uh, lady, the best young lady, the best woman alive. You can be the greatest man alive. But even if you never hurt a fly, you know, you hear people say, yeah, when I go to funerals, they say, he never hurt a fly. I don't understand what, why people hurt flies. But anyway, <laughs> they say he never hurt a fly. Even if you're that person, there is still somebody who hates you with a, patch, with a passion. And he is the devil. So the devil always hates you. He will hate you. He hates you before, from the day you were born till the day you die. He says, he comes to your funeral and he says, good riddance. That's how much he hates you. Did you know that you have a devil that hates you? Now, nah, Paul, sure, I got a mother-in-law that hates me. Don't worry, the mother-in-law is nothing compared to the devil. He hates you and he really, really hates you. He hates you. You'll do everything he can to destroy you, to destroy your, 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 your livelihood, your health, destroy your home, destroy your marriage. He'll do everything he can to destroy uh, your business, your career, your, 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 your children, whatever. Wherever there's a door open, Satan will creep in and he'll attack and destroy. This is why as children of God, we need to understand that Many times, there are brothers and sisters in the Lord. In fact, in fact, do this now. I want you to quickly look at someone in the church. Look at one. Don't look. If you're married, please look at someone else's wife or husband. Just, just try. <laughs> we are creating problems here. But look at someone quickly. Stare at them quickly. Will you do that? It's fine. It's allowed to stare it now because the pastor said you can stare. The pastor said you can stare, right? Now look at that person. See that person you're looking at right now? There's a good possibility that in the coming years, maybe in the coming months, you might not see that person again, that they will fall from grace. Oh, I've got to say it to you again. <laughs> There's a good possibility they may not even be in this church. There's a good possibility they could even fall out of the, out, out of the kingdom. But pastor... How can you say that? Well, you know, Jesus had uh, uh, 82 people f go follow him. He had a group of 82 disciples. Did you know he had 82 disciples? No, he had 12. He had 82. Where do you get that from? Jesus sent out the 70. Then he sent out the 12. How much is 70 plus 12? 82. He had 82 disciples. Of the 82... 70 turned back. They fell from grace. He, then he then turned to the 12. He said, what about you guys? We're all, you know, <laughs> you know, we got no choice for Jesus. We just sold everything, gave everything away. We have to follow you. We, you know, what, we, we just can't go back. So they stayed loyal to Jesus. There was a 12. So if you work it out, 12. All, uh, 12 over 80, oh, 12 over 82. Somebody quickly do your calculator math. Check it out. What, how many percent is that? 12 over 82. That's the amount that still stayed there with Jesus. Okay, we've got a lot of uh, 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 accountants here. Where's the accountants? See, the problem, you guys, never use calculators in school. <laughs> Our days, we should do no, no calculators. We had the little thing, and you, know, you move the things, the beads across. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> but you're getting the idea that there's a large percentage, and David will tell us the percentage just now. There's a large percentage, 14%, that's 14%. So if 14% stayed with Jesus, that means 86%. Uh, 86% 86 of the people will follow Jesus. Actually, 86% plus the one, you forgot about Judas. So, 86% of them turned away from the faith. 
Ooh, that's very big numbers. That's huge numbers. 86% of them that are following Jesus fell along the way. Are you following me, church? In fact, when they said to Jesus, what you're teaching us is so hard, will anybody be saved? And Jesus turned around and said, just make sure that you get into heaven. But how can these statistics from the Bible, I'm, I'm just talking from the Bible, be so hard, be so high, and, and, be, and, and it seemed that, hey, you know, I thought when I'm a Christian, is I got one-stop shop, everything is cool now. It's because day and night, there is an army that is actively working. It is an organized army actively working on, for your demise to bring you down. To destroy your home, destroy your family, destroy your business, destroy your health. It's to destroy your peace. It's to take loved ones away from you. There's an army actively working. And if you are not in prayer, if you are not praying, then first that you are prime target. Because you see, the thing about prayer is it reveals the strategies of the devil. Come on. Yeah, you know, uh, now, 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 if you're living in sin, you're going to church, you've got nothing to worry about. He's already got you, so you will not, the devil's not going to bother with you. I talk about people who are really serving Jesus. You've got to understand, you've got to guard, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You've got to guard what God has done and watch how you walk before God. Because Satan will come after you to take you out of your purpose. He will come out after you to destroy you. He will do that because that's his purpose in life. It's the thing he lives for. It's, a, it's his main reason for survival. It's to kill, steal, and destroy. So what he cannot steal from you, uh, uh, he'll, he'll try and kill you. If he can't kill you, he'll destroy you. What's the difference between killing and destroying? Killing means it's over, it's finished, it's, it's got you. Destroy means he keeps you alive, but he makes your life a living hell. Ooh, I didn't realize that poster. Yep, there is a devil. So, so church, you need to be aware of that there is a devil. We don't spend our whole life going around looking for the devil, worrying about the devil. What did I teach you on Sunday? Who takes you to the devil? Good. What? The Holy Spirit takes me? Oh, you were not here on Sunday. You won't know. <laughs> you got to get that message from Sunday. That was hectic stuff. So there is a devil, he's out to kill you. And, and you cannot say, I don't believe in the devil, I don't believe in witchcraft, I don't believe in, in all these works of Satan. Therefore, it won't harm me. How many times you've met people like I to say, because I refuse to believe it, therefore I'm safe. Whether you believe it or not, there is a God. Whether you believe it or not, there is also a devil. Amen. Whether you believe it or not, there is angels of God, and whether you believe it or not, there are demonic forces. So there are demonic forces at play 24 hours a day. There's demonic forces coming after your family, your children, and there's demonic forces coming over everything that you own. And as a church, the church of Jesus Christ, we need to be aware of these things because I think the church in South Africa is sleeping. We are sleeping. And we're about to get the biggest wake-up call ever. You know, when I looked at the statistics in the government, a large portion of the government in South Africa is, is, is Islamic. In fact, when you look at what goes on in our country, when it comes to getting property, the churches are, are the government is not giving property and land to churches. They're giving it to mosques. And they're making more and more mosques are coming up. So there's a, an Islamic agenda at the moment in our country to make us a Muslim country. While the Christians are sleeping and saying, we, are, we have 60% of the majority. How long? How long? So you guys need to understand that there is at the moment wickedness in the heavens, wickedness on the earth. And as a church, we need to be aware of this wickedness, even the wickedness that comes against our home and our families. Now Jesus says, he says, I am the good shepherd. Now, let me just say this to you. How I many of you know that Jesus is our example? Amen? If you want to know how to live as a Christian, uh, you need to look at Jesus. You want to know how to be an effective 
believer, look at Jesus. Everything Jesus did, you should do. Everything Jesus said, we should be saying. Everything Jesus believed for, we should be believing. But not just there. He said, greater works than this will you do. Which means everything Jesus wanted to do and everything that he did, we can do even greater. Because why? His Spirit lives in us now. The Holy Spirit lives in us. So we are called to be like Jesus. We are called to show the world Jesus. The Bible says you are the light of the world. The Bible says that you are the salt of the world. So we are supposed to influence the world with Jesus and what is inside us. Now, he is our example. So I want to I wanna take this message to another level because I, besides, you know, I mean if you know the prophecy or, or scripture is, is always relevant on two levels of prophecy. Scripture is always relevant on two levels of prophecy. That means scripture pertains to the now, to the situation where it's been reflected to. But scripture always has a greater prophetic meaning to it. So, it, for example, uh, when they said, uh, uh, when they said John the Baptist would, sorry, when they said Elijah would come again, that was a, a, a word that was spoken. It had a meaning for the time when John the Baptist arose because he was a prophetic Elijah. But also it has a meaning for the end times when Jesus comes that the spirit of Elijah will arise, which is the spirit of the prophetic. So scripture always has a dual meaning. Don't, don't stress about it if you don't understand that fully. Come to Bible school. Now, <laughs> Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. If Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, how many of you know that you, having Christ inside you, having Jesus as the example, that you are also the good shepherd? Let's, let me try it again. Some people didn't get it on that side. Let's try it on this side. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And if you say, I have Christ in me, I want to be like Jesus, then you should also be the good shepherd. Maybe not the shepherd with the capital S, but the good shepherd with the small s. But you're still the good shepherd. God expects you to be like Jesus. He expects you to be the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life, gives his life for the sheep. So God expects us to also be prepared to lay down our lives. For who? The sheep. What is sheep? People. What people? Everybody, true. What kind of, what kind of entity is a sheep? Is a sheep, does, do sheep have a PhD degree? Uh, they do have a PhD, pass high school with difficulty. <laughs> okay, sheep, are, sheep, as we understand it, are, need direction in life. They, they, they go where the grass is green. They follow the, you know, they, they just go, they're random. And so they need a shepherd to guide them. So if you are sheep, and the, sorry, if you're a shepherd and they are sheep, it means there's somebody who is a weaker Christian, somebody who is a growing Christian, that you are called to be shepherd over. Are you with me so far? Are you with me, church? So, we are called to be good shepherds. Now, but pastor, I thought only the pastor is a shepherd. No, the pastor is also a shepherd. We are all shepherds. Are you following me, church? If you have Christ in you, God expects you to be a shepherd. Now, let's go a little further. But he that is a highly. So there's a shepherd, and opposed to a shepherd, there is somebody called a highly. Are you with me so far? He that is a highly is not the shepherd who owns the sheep, who, who owns the sheep are not seeing that the wolf cometh and he leaves the sheep and he flees and the wolf gets the sheep and scatters the sheep so there is also a shepherd and then there is a hireling and, and the hireling is the one who does not see himself or herself 
as being accountable for the sheep God brings into their life. And how do you know they're not accountable? Because whenever there is some form of danger, when there is a wolf that's about to attack, rather than defending the sheep, they betray the sheep. And allow the sheep to be destroyed by the wolf. Who is the wolf that attacks the sheep? Come on, you ready? Just now, the verse before it, two verses before it, God told you who it is. Who is that? Satan. Satan is the wolf that comes after the sheep. And so, there is either a shepherd... Or there is a highly. Now first let me say this. What is the similarity between a shepherd and a highly? Both are called to take care of the sheep. And both do take care of the sheep. Is that correct? Does a highly take care of the sheep? When the sheep needs to go and have grass. Does the highly take the sheep to the grass? Yep. That's what the hireling will do. What is a hireling? It's a hired hand. It's someone who, uh, uh, who comes in to function where there is a gap. They fulfill that gap. So if, there's, if, 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 the, if, the, if the shepherd owns lots of property and he's quite wealthy, he doesn't have to stay away from his family and his home. He doesn't have to sleep at night with the sheep. How many of you know the shepherds sleep with the sheep? They sleep at the gate, enters the gate, and uh, uh, the sheep smell them, they know their sins. That's why Jesus spoke about, my sheep hear my voice, because the shepherd stays out of the field at night, and he sleeps with the sheep. And so, the sheep relate to a shepherd. Now, when shepherds are wealthy, those shepherds that are wealthy, they hire people, to take care of their sheep. And these people are called hirelings. You know, in our modern terms, they're called substitutes. Right? They're called hirelings. Now, the hirelings will come uh, in, 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 in Jewish society and in Palestine, they are considered to be untrustworthy people. In fact, it goes to a point where they even don't have certain rights and stuff like that that are denied to hirelings because they feel. In, in that culture, they feel that hirelings, they steal the, the newborns, that the hirelings steal the milk from the sheep and stuff like that and so on. So there's a lot of mistrust when it comes to hirelings. And that's why Jesus spoke about the term hireling. So the hireling comes and, and he also does the work of the shepherd. That means the hireling works and takes care of the sheep. Now, now, now let, let's bring it down to a modern day example. So you have a hireling who maybe is in charge of certain people. Maybe he's a cell leader, a cell leader, and he has all these people in his cell. So does he, as a moment where he shepherds them, but when the enemy comes, the person with a hireling spirit, that person deserts, betrays the sheep. And that person allows Satan to destroy, to catch and scatter the sheep. So you see, in the body of Christ, there is two types of people. There are those who are good shepherds and those that are hirelings. So how do we know the difference between those two types? We're going to go a little deeper. Well, let's go to the next verse, verse number 13. Why does hireling do this? The hireling flees because he is a hireling. And he does not care for the sheep. So there are two kinds of people in the body of Christ. There are those that care about those that are hurting. Those that care about those that are lost. They're called shepherds. And there are those that don't care what happens to people. They are called hirelings by God. Are you with me so far? So verse 14. Jesus now says, I am the good shepherd. In other words, I take care of the sheep. And I know my sheep. And I'm known 
of and I'm known of mine. So they know me and I know them. And my father knoweth me, even so know I the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, Jesus is talking about sheep that can go astray. Now the thing about being a shepherd, and, and maybe, and I'm sure you know some of the stuff that I'm going to teach you. One of the things that shepherds do that, you know, when, when, the, when they have naughty sheep and the sheep keeps uh, running away, getting itself into trouble, can get eaten by, uh, by wild animals. The shepherd breaks the legs of the sheep. So when the leg is broken, that sheep stays in one spot near the shepherd. When the leg is healed, that sheep now learns to stay close to the shepherd. It forms a bond with the shepherd. So sometimes the shepherd has to break the legs of the sheep. <laughs> Especially sheep that they don't listen. But a hireling, a hireling spirit is very prevalent in the church today. It's prevalent in the church in South Africa. I see it all over the world wherever I go. I even see it sometimes in this church. People have a hireling spirit. What is a hireling? See, you see, when, we, when, we, when, when, the, when the body of Christ preach about the hireling spirit, they talk about some minister that comes and tries to split the church. Some minister that comes and tries to split the church and run away with sheep. And, they, and, and, and then someone turns and says, well, that person is a hireling. They, you know, they, they just got their own agenda. But a hireling spirit is one of two spirits that you can have. You either have a shepherd spirit or you have a hireling spirit. And this is how you know which one you walk in. You know, a shepherd, Jesus teaches us, goes after the one sheep. He will leave the 99 behind if one is missing. He will go after the one. And he will find the one that is missing. And he'll bring that one back into the fold. That's a shepherd's spirit. That's a shepherd's heart. It's where... You care what happens to people's lives. Even as myself, as a pastor, if there's somebody I see that the Satan has got a, a, a hold on, they've opened a door. As a pastor, we, the first thing we'll do is obviously we'll try and contact them. And, and often when people do something wrong, they start to avoid us. Well, the moment we know somebody's not answering our BBM, our emails, our phone calls, they're ducking. And if they're ducking from me, it actually means reality. It means they're ducking from Jesus. Because I'm, if you know, I have Christ over me. Yeah, as the leaders, we have the anointing. So when they are doing that, then they're very next, with the, at the same time, we go before God. We go on our knees and we start to pray for that person. Because there's a war for that person's soul. A, that person is being snatched away by the devil. And you need to put a demand. You need to put a demand for that person's soul. Whether it means you come before God and you, you weep before God, whether it means you go into warfare for God, but you pray for that person because that's what a good shepherd does. A good shepherd will always go after the one. A hireling spirit is a different kind of spirit. This is a person who will go pick up the phone and start to gossip about the sheep that's missing. Yeah, I think that sheep found another sheep. <laughs> that's why they're not around. That's a hiling spirit. A hiling spirit does not really care about the lost. Because it's not their own. That's how you pick up the two spirits in the church. You know, as a pastor... I promote people, as you know, and even people do good. And, and, and sometimes I say, well, God, can I bring these people to the management team? Can I bring them here? And the Lord says, no. If you do that, they'll destroy the church. They don't have a shepherd's heart. It's a hireling heart. So to find a shepherd's heart, you have to spend time with a person. And the shepherd's heart is always somebody who is busy praying for someone who's missing. That's a shepherd's heart. A hireling is always gossiping, running down, murmuring. That person doesn't have the heart of Jesus. 
that's not the heart of Jesus. Are you listening to me, church? So this is one of two spirits that are active today in the church. And that's why you need to always look in the mirror. Because, you know, don't worry about who's next to you, who's front of you, behind you. Always examine yourself. You've got to ask yourself, what kind of spirit do I have over my life? When I see someone is falling or has fallen, do I go and, and, and pray for that person, visit the person? Or do I now go and run that person down or start, going to get, or start gossiping about that person? Or start gossiping about the church and the leaders of the church? What spirit do I walk in? And this is what you need to look at. So in the body of Christ in South Africa, we are the, we, the church is the only organization that shoots all its wounded people. It's the only army that shoots its wounded people. And hey, what I'm telling you seems to be a global thing. You can go to Cape Town. You can go to Durban. You can go to Johannesburg. It seems that the body of Jesus has lost the love of God. They've stopped loving people and all they care about is who can they slander next? Who can they BBM about next? Who can they Facebook about next? Who can they phone or, or congregate about next? It's because they are hirelings. They don't really care about that person. They don't have a heart for people who are lost. And this is where we are suffering the biggest tragedy in the body of Christ today. Because people will fail. You see, the body of Christ, tomorrow it can be you. How would you want to be restored? Would you want people around you to care for you so much that they will not allow anyone to run people down, but would rather go on their knees and pray for that person? Because that's the environment I want to live in. That's the kind of people I want around me. People who care for people who have fallen. Are you listening to me, church? See, this is, what, this is the difference between that two kinds of spirit that Jesus talks about. Because you see, the Pharisees in those days, they had a hiling spirit. The Pharisees only cared about themselves. They cared about where they sat in the church. They cared about all these things, about recognition they got. They cared about uh, 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 what, how they wore, how they prayed, what people said about them in society. And Jesus said, you don't really care about the lost sheep of Israel. You don't really care about them. You're just a hiding. If they don't do what you want them to do, you will just hand them over to Satan like that. And that is where we, and that's you and me, we today have to examine our hearts. Do I truly love people? And what spirit do I live in? Do I entertain those that at work when they, are, uh, 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 when they bash somebody? Do I entertain that? Or do I have the heart of Jesus? Amen? Something we need to look at, each one of us. So Jesus goes on and he says, uh, uh, He says in verse 17, well, okay, let's just read from where we're 15. Let's, we can read through, it's fine. 15, 16, another sheep have high and I have not of this fold. Them also I must bring and they must hear my voice and shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore, do it, my father love me. Why does God in heaven love Jesus? My father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. In other words, I have made the choice to, sur to, to go to the cross to die for, the, for these sheep. So this is the extent to which I love people, that I am prepared to die for them. There was a story of a man uh, 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 in, in, in China who was told about Jesus. He was a Buddhist man. And... Uh, and he said, but I can't understand this. How can a man lay down his life for someone else? 
uh, 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 how can he sacrifice life for someone else? I mean, how is he going to save people by doing this? And how can he have this kind of love? And, uh, and this is, by the way, this is a true story. So there was a new railroad that was started in, in that part of China. And uh, they were on a maiden voyage going through the railroad from one town to the next town. And uh, while they were on the voyage, something happened to the train. The, the train brakes failed. And despite, despite everything they were trying to do, they could not stop the train. And this train was now going down a steep hill. And they knew that as the moment it went down this hill, everybody on board, the woman, the children, they would all die. But this man, he worked on the railway. So he understood that, you know, uh, uh, that there is a way to actually jam the brakes. But to do it, somebody would have to get in there to, to jam it. And the person who would have to do that would lose their life. So he pondered about it, a few, few seconds to think about it, and he realized what Jesus said. And so he said to his friend on the train, I now understand what it means to lay down your life for somebody, to have greater love. And then he jumped off the train, wedged his body between the brakes and the, and, and the wheels, and he stopped the train but he died in the process. He sacrificed his life so that all those people on the train could be saved. And this is what we mean by greater love. It's when you want to lay down your time, your energy. You want to lay down everything that is valuable to you for somebody else. That's what greater love is. That's what it means to, to sacrifice your love for someone else. It's when it's a cold day, like I mean, today is a pretty cold day. It's a cold day like today, and you will leave your, your warm solar power, <laughs> uh, gas powered home, uh, gas heater powered home, and you'd want to go out in the cold because someone uh, 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 is broken and fearful and suicidal. And you want to leave your home and go and pray for that person. You want to go and visit that person. If it's because you'll leave the comfort of your chair and, and rather than watch your favorite movie on TV, you want to counsel somebody on the phone. That's what greater love is. That's what God called us to do. He called us to love people to the extent that we would give our time, our energy, our life to the lost sheep. That's what being a good shepherd is about. Amen? It's what God called each one of us to do. But you see, the, the modern society tells us you, you, you have a little bit of Jesus and you, have a, and you have a little bit of the world. You know, you don't become too spiritual because then you lose the world. I would rather lose the world than have only Jesus. Are you listening to me, church? See, this is what we're talking about. Surrendering to Jesus and doing good. Paying that, being Committing ourselves to people who are lost and in need. Going that extra mile. Laying down your life for someone else. And when we learn this, and this is what Jesus did. And when you do this, that's when the Father in heaven looks down at you. And he says, well done. Well done. Now look at verse 18. Jesus says, no man take it from me, take it my life from me. But I lay down my, of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. The commandment I have received of my, this commandment I have received of my father. So Jesus said, listen, nobody is making me to do this. That's what he's saying. So even when you go and you, you want to go, and let's just say it's a cold night, you want to go and pray for somebody and, uh, and, and, and just spend some time encouraging them. No one makes you to do that. No one is forcing you to do it. But it is something that you want to do because of what your heart is like. Are you with me, church? Are you with me? Amen? Good. So it's the condition of your heart. Let's go on verse number 19. There was a division, therefore, um, again, uh, again amongst the Jews of, 
of thee, saying, And many of them said, He has a devil and he's mad. And why are you hearing him? So, <laughs> so the people could not take the fact that he was saying, You need to love people. As a church, we need to love people. We need to come to this place where we open our hearts to people who are hurting. We open our hearts to people who, who need the love of Jesus. Remember, there are many people with a hiding spirit. Those people will go nowhere. There is no favor of God on their lives. There really is no favor of God on their lives. Because God blesses according to the way a man or woman walks. Are you listening to me, church? The blessing is there from the beginning. We are the seed of Abraham. But the blessing must be appropriated. And God blesses us based on our faithfulness. He blesses us on how we walk. And so when you walk right with God, you'll always live in that blessing. When you know how to honor people, when you know how to be a good shepherd, you will never have lack. God will always bless you and favor you. It's only people who have the hiding spirit. And they are the ones that, that never see the favor of God on their businesses, on their homes, on their family. It keeps slipping away. It's because of the heart that we have. Are you with me, church? So today I want you to look at yourself. So uh, I, 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 it was just something that, that's, been, that's been bothering me for a few days. Uh, that people in the world we live in have lost their passion for Jesus. Some people have even lost their passion to work for Jesus. When people lose their passion to work for Jesus, the first thing they do is they start complaining. Why am I the only one doing this? It's because you don't have a shepherd's heart. You don't have a shepherd's heart. But when you have a shepherd's heart, everything you do, you do it for Jesus. Amen? You know, I have an expensive car. But there are times when I have to open the sunroof, put pipes through my own sunroof, <laughs> put plumbing through the sunroof, whatever, for the church. I have a phone and I think, well, I've got so many people in the church here. They all are buckies. Why can't they come and help me? People are busy. I do what I do because I love God. Because I'm called to serve Him first. Because I'm called to be a good shepherd. I don't wait for someone else to, to turn up. You see, the, you see, if you want people to follow you and come and catch you, you've got to be on fire. When you're on fire, everybody will come watch you burn. But if you're not on fire, nobody will come and watch you burn. Are you following me? You have to be on fire for people to come watch you burn. So, if you walk right and you're walking in God's power and you're doing what is right in the sight of God and, you, and you're bringing healing and hope, then you, you're the fire. You're a flame of fire. Others will naturally follow you. But if you are lazy, don't expect people to follow you. If you don't inspire, people are not going to follow you. Are you following me, church? So, you remember what we spoke earlier on? Everything starts with leader. With the leader, with leadership. And what kind of leader am I? How do I lead? If I lead right, I will start producing results. So, be the good shepherd. Be the good shepherd. When you go to work tomorrow, are you a shepherd to the people in your office? Are you a shepherd to your colleagues? Well, how do you represent Christ to them? Or are you part of the clique that's got knives in the back ready to stab everybody? You know in the office, how many of you have worked in the corporate world? How many of you know in the corporate world there's only two kinds of people? Come on. What are the two kinds in the corporate world? The good shepherds and the hirelings. Oh, pastor. That's only two kinds of people in the corporate world. People who, are, people who want to help you get to, to be successful or people who want your job, or want to get rid of you. The hirelings and the shepherds. Same wherever you go. But, but if other people are hirelings, 
You have no excuse to be a highly. You have no excuse. You are called to be a good shepherd. Because you are called to be like Jesus. You are called to live like Jesus, walk like Jesus. Be the representation of Jesus wherever you go. You must get to, a, to, you must get to, the, to the supermarket and they must say, I saw Jesus. I saw Jesus there. That's what, my, that's what needs to happen. It's how far will you go and what will you do? And this is somewhere where we need to get away from me, myself, and I and understand what God calls us to do today. Amen? Amen? Good. So let's bow, your, let's bow our heads right now. And I want you to think about what I'm saying to you today. This is not a message to condemn you. It's a message to liberate you. Because in, our, in South Africa at the moment, in our country, there is so little of Jesus. So little of Jesus. So few people are seeing Jesus in the churches. So few people are seeing Jesus in their families. You know, I get Hindu people that come to me. You know, this is the strangest thing. Hindu people say to me, there are two kinds of Christians. I said, yes, what do you mean by that? Well, they say, well, pastor, there are people who call themselves Christians and are hypocrites. And then, this is the Hindu people, what they tell me. And then they say to me, they are born again Christians. Real Christians. Now, this is a Hindu person can distinguish <laughs> between the two. Because, you know, Mahatma Gandhi, he said, what makes Christianity the real, the real religion, makes it so great? He said, Jesus Christ. He said, why won't I be a Christian? Because of the Christians. They are hirelings. They're not good shepherds. They slander, lie, always gossiping, tearing down people, not building the body, not building the body of Jesus. That's what Mahatma Gandhi said. You know, Mahatma Gandhi, Charlie Chaplin is a born again, was a born again believer. So Charlie Chaplin became close friends with Mahatma Gandhi. And Charlie Chaplin started ministering to Mahatma Gandhi with the hope that Mahatma Gandhi would be, become a Christian. although he heard the gospel message preached because of the way Christian people behaved he said there's no way I want to be a Christian how many people have we turned away from the cross by our behavior how many lives have we destroyed by our behavior let's put it right today church let's get our act right today this is what we're called to do. In a dying world, we are the only hope they have. We are, the hope, we are the only hope the dying world has. They're not going to see a star from Bethlehem come to visit them. They're going to meet you. Will you love them enough? Will you care for them enough? show them there is a God in heaven and when people fall will you love them enough to pray for them when their hearts turn bitter will you love them enough to pray for them and pray for them to be restored when they make all kinds of excuses running away from the presence of God will you love them enough and hold them stand in the gap for them to seed for them that God will bring them back will you do that that's what God calls us to do
calls us to do. I want you to spend, as David plays, I want you to look at yourself. If you're saying, Pastor, I, I, I've just got to put these things right in my life. I've got to come back to Jesus. I understand God wants me to be the good shepherd. And I have got people that he has related me to. People who have become my good friends. I need to be a good shepherd over their lives. I need to guide them back to the cross. Guide them back to God's presence. But maybe you have been the good shepherd all this time. It's time just to strengthen that walk with Jesus. And so I'm not going to call anybody to the front. If you're going to put your life right with God, I'm going to give you a minute and you talk to Him right now. You need to say to Him, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me time you started doing that. Put it up as Sataraba Shianda Raba Bahane. Kiriabo Sataraba Hane. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Father, as we come before your throne today, Lord, we recommit our lives to you today. And Lord, today we've been talking things of the heart. And so, we bring our hearts before you. I bring my heart before you. Lord, as I lay my heart bare before you, search me, Lord. Help me to be a better shepherd. Help me to love more than I ever loved it before. Help me to be more like Jesus. Help me not to deafen my ears to the cry of the lost, the cry of the sheep. But help me to respond with love. Help me to be there to nurture the lost, to restore the lost. Trust me, Lord, wherever I am, whether it is in my workplace, whether it is in my school, whether it is in my neighborhood, whether it is in, uh, uh, in the public libraries, where, where the, whether it is in my office where I work at, wherever it is where people are broken and hurting and lost, let me operate in the balm of Gideon, the balm of love balm of love because Christ is love he loved me so much that he died for me and he loves those that are lost so much that he wants to see them restored Christ is love we too are called to live in that love and father as I pray for every person if there's someone we've turned our back on, if there's a brother or a sister we have turned our back on, please forgive us. We don't want to see the devil destroy them. Help us to bring them into the fold. We cry out, Lord, help us to bring them into the fold. Those that are so shameful, been bound by shame because of a wrong they've done. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name, to remove that shame and fill them with hope and faith again. To bring them back to their home, to their family. 
tonight we cry out for the lost Lord. We cry out for the lost. And Jesus, let none of them perish. Let none of them perish. For time is running out. But let none of them perish. Not one of them. Those that are bound by lies, that believe lies, their minds are twisted by the lie of Satan. Set them free in their minds. Set them free in their minds that they will truly love again. That they will come back to Jesus. Come back to hope. Yes, Master. Thank you, Holy Spirit.